Are you ready to make money? Then let's go over this course, Fundamentals and Basics of Stock Trading. Now in this course, the first thing we will talk about in the introduction section is how to make money. What are the truth and reality of investing in the stock market? How you should be conditioning your mindset? And then we'll look at some richest people around the world and how they made their money. What are the differences between an economy versus a stock market? And how does investing differentiate while investing in stocks versus real estate or starting up a new business? Understanding what the sectors and industries are and the and companies within those sectors and industries. And then we'll talk about constructing a portfolio and opening up a brokerage account. Moving forward, we'll go over principles of investing. We'll, we'll discuss what are the difference be, differences are between investing and trading and knowing yourself what suits you. How much should you be investing? Setting your own goals. And after all said and done, if you make a little bit of money, how are you going to then minimize your fees and taxes so you can keep most of it? Then we'll talk about different types of investments such as stocks or penny stocks or understanding the difference between an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund and a mutual fund. And should you be investing in dividend stocks, which constantly pay you income and you don't really have to keep buying and selling stuff, you can invest in it for long term and start generating some income via dividends. Then we'll talk about how to research and analyze that information related to your portfolio. We'll look at different business news. We will look at some websites such as Yahoo Finance. Then what is the information available through your broker and the information that's available on Twitter or YouTube? And how are you going to differentiate between people, whether they're providing you with valuable information or not? So you want to be very careful when you're following people online. After discussing that, we'll jump into fundamental analysis, which is looking at the financial statements of different companies and understanding their income and cash flow and how their assets and liabilities match up and whether it's a good investment or not. So we'll try to understand whether a stock is cheap or expensive and whether a stock is a value stock versus a growth stock. All these decisions matter when you're investing for yourself and for the long term. But there are other tools such as technical analysis that you can look at charts and price trends and make decisions whether it's a good investment, whether you should be jumping in or not, how to protect your capital, and all those things are very beneficial when it comes to technical analysis and it will help you protect a lot of money during a downturn and it will give you signals during an uptrend and allow you to jump in and make money. And then finally, we will talk about retirement investing. How should you be saving for retirement? What are the plans that are offered through your employer such as 401k? or the government might have some incentives such as IRA, which is a, which are individual retirement accounts, such as traditional IRA and Roth IRA. So after all said and done, you will be in a state where you'll have a broad understanding of stocks, economy, analyzing information, following business news, looking at charts and making buy and sell decisions and how to invest for the long term and protect your capital and have money when you need it the most. So let's dig deeper into it. All right. In this video, we will talk about how to make money in stocks. And that's why you are here taking this course. So before you invest anything in stocks, you need to invest in yourself because you need to learn. And as you know, knowledge is the power. And what are the different things you need to know or learn? While you're investing in yourself, the first thing is read. Read as much as you can. Read the books, financial books, newspaper, journals, articles. Take courses, whether it's an online course or in-person course. Like right now, you're taking this online course, which is pretty much three to four hours long, and you're going to get so much out of it that you will be able 
to make intelligent decision and make a lot of money in stocks. Talk to people who regularly invest in stock market. Like if, if there's you have your uncle, your aunt, your cousin, anybody who is investing in stocks regularly, talk to them because at the end, information is the key. Then do a lot of research before you actually invest. If you're going to go invest in, let's say, Apple or Microsoft, do some research whether they are the good stock to buy, how, how their chart looks like. You need to read their financial reports. Yes, those are public information. You could search it online and get their financial reports. Use other market tools to perform the research on a stock that you're going to buy. Then the best trick that I could tell you, stay invested, which is in, in simple term, buy and hold. Yes, if you do not invest in stocks every day, and this is not something you do as it's for living, then you should buy and hold. Because over the long term, the stock market news will be good. And that's what billionaire investor Warren Buffett always says. And what he wrote in New York Times, in the 20th century, the United States endured two world wars and other tra traumatic and expensive military conflicts. The depression, a dozen or so recession and financial panics, oil shocks, loot the pandemic and the resignation of disgraced president. And look at that. Yet the Dow still rose from 66 to 11,497, which the reason he said all that, which actually proves if you buy and hold, you will make money. All right. Then diversify your investment, which means don't put all your money into one stock or bond or invest in multiple entities in the same industry. For example, maybe you're just investing in tech. Maybe you're just invest, investing in car industry. As people say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You gotta invest in different stocks. So if one industry goes down, you're still saving money or making money in the other industry. And last but not the least, don't invest everything. So let's say if you have $10,000 saved, please, please don't take that entire 10,000 and deplete your savings. And of course, don't borrow to invest in stocks. That's not a good idea. In this video, we will talk about the truth of stock market. First thing first is you cannot get rich quickly. There is no overnight scheme that I'm going to tell you or teach you that you'll become rich. People who become rich are simply purely lucky. They maybe buy a stock or they maybe buy a cryptocurrency and overnight it has quadruple or it become 1,000 or 2,000 percent more than the price that you paid. Maybe you are that one of the one of the million person or lucky person who become rich. Otherwise, there is no such scheme or that I'm going to sell you for you to become rich quickly. So same way, there are no shortcuts. There isn't a book that I'm going to tell you. There isn't a specific course, even just my course, taking this course and then start investing and you're going to make a lot of money. No, I'm not guaranteeing that, but I one thing I am promising you is it will help you a lot to make wise decisions when you're investing in stocks. All right, don't try to beat the market. 80% of people or more lose money when they make assumptions. When I say assumptions, it is without you knowing about the company without you learning about their financial charts, without knowing their financial history, you're just assuming that the stock will go up or go down, then you are in one of those 80% who will lose money. You cannot time the market. You cannot say, hey, I think the market will go up tomorrow and I'll sell. I think the market will go down tomorrow and I'll buy. No, you cannot. If you are not a risk taker, then do not invest in risky business. Yes, I repeat, if you do not like to take risk, then why do you want to invest in penny stocks? Those are the most risky businesses. 
day trading is not for everyone. Yes, yeah, so people who do day trading, they go through a lot of stress, by the way, and a lot of number of years of experience. So if you are coming into the stock market for the very first time in your life, then first you need to learn about the stock market before you start trading every day. You will lose money if you don't know what and where to invest. So a friend of you come to you and ask you to invest in XYZ company and you do, then again, you most likely lose money if you do not do your due diligence and do proper research about that company before you invest in it. Money makes money. Of course, if you invest it in 1000 in a stock and that 10, it goes 10% up, you only make $100. As opposed to have hundred thousand invested, then you make a lot of money, right? Ten percent, ten thousand. So as you accumulate money, you will make a lot of money. And the last thing is the stock market prices are simply determined by the law of demand. So you probably see one of the stocks of one company actually went way up. It's just because bigger sharks have probably invested a lot of money in uh, that stock, which actually changed everything about the stock and its uh, value significantly went up it's all about law of demand and if a company or if those bigger sharks sell everything they have all the holdings they have in a stock that stock will drop so these are the few things that i wanted to talk to you about the stock market one of the most important things in life is mindset same goes for investing your mindset during your 20s is going to be different from when you're in your 30s. That's because you're going to learn from your experiences and your responsibilities and obligations are going to change over time. As you progress in your life and approach retirement, your mindset is going to keep changing. This is because your risk tolerance is going to change. When you're young, you have the ability to take on more risk. But as you progress in your life, your risk-taking ability may change due to circumstances and life obligations. However, I'm not going to tell you in this course that you have to be risk-averse. Rather, I'm going to tell you that you have to take on risk to achieve your goals. So bigger your goals, the more risk you might have to take. As they say, greater the risk, greater the reward. However, no one will tell you greater the risk of loss. We hear fascinating stories of great investors achieving great success while investing. But we never hear about stories of all those who took similar risks and failed. Because no one publishes those stories of people who failed. But if you want to experience that, just go stand outside a casino and you will see many people leaving unhappy rather than leaving happy from their wins. The objective of this course is not to teach you to gamble, rather how to wisely invest and trade by taking calculated risk so that you can be successful. You must have heard the saying, cash is king. But my question to you is, is cash really the king? So let me ask you a rhetorical question. Have the prices of goods and services gone down over the past five years or up? The answer is they have gone up. The prices of houses, new cars, food, travel, services keep rising over time. Plus, the government around the world have the ability to print more money. So over the long term, there is only one thing that's guaranteed based on past experience. Cash is going to keep losing its value. So we are going to learn in this course how to invest by taking on risk so that we have our cash working for us rather than it working for the big banks. Finally, the difference between a trader and an investor. In the next slide, I will show you the most richest people in the world. They are the richest people in life because they invested their time, skill, effort into a business over a long period of time. As soon as their businesses became successful, they did not just trade it for another one. So my objective is to teach you to be disciplined investor so you can build your wealth over time 
then take on some opportunities as they present. So this is going to be our balanced approach for long-term success. All right, so let's move on. Richest people in the world. At the time when I'm preparing these slides, these are the richest people in the world. You may know some or all of them. Elon Musk is the founder and CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. He created and sold PayPal, and the money that he got from it, he invested all of that money into three businesses. Today, he's the richest man on earth because he focused on innovation and he came up with an electric car when companies like Toyota, GM, Ford, Volkswagen, that are the largest producers of cars, didn't do it. Some of the Teslas go from 0 to 60 in less than 4 seconds, challenging some of the fastest, most expensive cars on earth. Jeff Bezos, he's the founder and CEO of Amazon. He started selling books online from his garage. And today, anything and everything can be found on Amazon's website. Other than selling things on their website, they're into streaming business, cloud computing, and even pharmacy, and many other businesses. On this list, we have Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft. His software, like Windows and, and Office, are used all around the globe. We have Larry Page, who is the founder of, of Google. Google is used for search all around the world. People go on, on Google to look at the trends, search anything on the web, and, and all over the world it's used. Now, what do all these people's, people have in common? They created a product and took their businesses public and held on to the shares. Now, so the wealth that they have accumulated is by holding on to the great businesses that they created and they believed in. Many investors create great products, but more often than not, they sell them at a great price to big companies. Big companies or wealthy investors don't care about paying a little bit of higher prices because they see the value of, of some great products can bring to their businesses. But once you find a good company and you hold on to that investment, and if you see the trend that the company keeps on doing better and better every year or every quarter, and they're generating more revenues and more earnings, then those investments are going to pay off big in the future. Now, say you invested $1,000 in Amazon when it went public in, in May of 1997. Today, that $1,000 would be worth over $2 million. Let me repeat that. Today, that $1,000 would be worth over $2 million. You can go online and search through the richest people in the world and, and you will not find names of traders, you know, people who buy and sell shares, right? Why? Because the richest people in the world are the ones who created good products, they held on to their businesses, and they reinvested those profits into, into making this, their businesses even bigger. So in this course, my focus is going to guide you how to invest for the long term so you can build your wealth over time. But we will discuss about some trading opportunities and how you can exploit them in the short term to make some quick trades and generate returns for trading. Economy versus the stock market. Economy is the production and consumption of goods and services. It encompasses everyone within it, such as the government, public or private companies, and individuals. What does that mean? It means that everyone within the boundaries of a country or a town are part of its economy, whether it's the government, companies, or individuals. On the other hand, stock market is made up of all the stock exchanges where stocks or shares of public companies are traded. What that means is stock market is used in a broader sense and there could be multiple stock exchanges in a country. For instance, in New York alone, there are two stock exchanges, which are New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. On the slide over here, I have a picture of New York Stock Exchange, which is on Wall Street, and NASDAQ, which is 
in Times Square in New York. Overall, there are 13 stock exchanges within the US. There are eight active stock exchanges in India. So it is not uncommon to have more than one stock exchange in the country. Stock exchange is where investors can buy or sell shares of companies. Buying a share of a company means you're buying a small piece of that company. In the previous video, we saw Elon Musk is the richest man. Now say you believe in Tesla and you want to invest in the business. You can buy as little as one share to invest in that company. Shares of many companies are traded on the stock exchange. If buyers are willing to pay a higher price to buy a share, then the immediately preceding transaction, it will drive the price higher. On the flip side, if the buyers don't bid up and sellers try to sell the, to the best possible offer, which is lower than the current price, it will drag the price lower. These transactions occur throughout the day. And at the end of the day, we see whether the stock market went up or down during that day. It is the trading of buyers and sellers that determines the change in price. So after all that, the question is, is the economy and the stock market the same thing? The answer is no. Remember, stock market is not the economy and the economy is not the stock market. It may seem that the economy is poor and the stock market keeps going higher. Or conversely, that the stock market fa is falling while the economy looks healthy. Stock market is a leading indicator of the economy. If the stock market is going higher, it shows the strength of the economy and the coming times in the future. But during a short period of time, they can seem disconnected. But over a long period of time, stock market will not keep going higher if the economy isn't strong enough. In this picture, you can see runners and spectators. All these people are in the same city or area. They're all interested in that race, but some are participating in the race while others are not. We cannot look, to, look at a spectator and assess the runners. Similarly, certain companies or businesses may be hurting while the stock market keeps rising, and we have seen that during the past two years in pandemic. Many mom and pop stores and even large companies had to shut down their businesses. This chart shows the performance of S&P 500 and coronavirus cases. S&P 500 is an index or a basket of top 500 companies that are traded in the US. S&P 500 is something synonymously used as the market. The blue line shows how S&P 500 performed when the pandemic started. It dropped a little over 30% in a very short period of time. But as the cases were rising, the market started going higher. There were many large institutions or investment pundits who came out and said that the economy is headed into a depression. But every single day, the market would ignore that and continue going higher. This chart shows the recovery, how far the market came up after the coronavirus crash. So to sum up, stock market is not the economy and the economy is not the stock market. Stock market is a discounting mechanism. It discounts the future events. It always looks in the future and tries to price the upcoming events. To give you an example, say you see a new area being developed, many high rises, malls, public transportation system being constructed. What will happen to the real estate prices in that area? They will start to rise as investors will look at the development and look towards the potential of real estate investment in that area. Many companies will try to be part of that growth. Banks, restaurants, retailers will try to establish in that area to take advantage of that growth and its future potential. Investors are always looking for value and what businesses will benefit from in the future. Real estate, business and stocks. These are the most common ways of creating wealth. The most common and the easiest to understand is to own real estate. As soon as people have some money, 
first thing that they want to do is to buy a house for themselves. Although they are living in it, the house is still part of their estate and legacy. As they have more money, they would buy more real estate and rent it out. This way they are building wealth and have a source of income. Since rich and wealthy invest in real estate, generally government provides a lot of tax benefits for real estate owners. One of the major benefits is that real estate is a great way to hedge inflation. However, there are certain drawbacks such as your money is stuck in those properties and it's not always easy to sell quickly. You need a lot of money to buy real estate in some countries because maybe the leverage is not easily available or interest rates are too high. You also need to actively deal with issues that arise from time to time or hire a property manager to deal with them. And finally, there are always going to be repair and maintenance to keep your property in tip-top condition. Another way of building wealth is to start a business. We see ideas and opportunities around us all the time, but it's all about taking initiative and taking that first step. Running your business is self-fulfilling. You can grow your business and help others along the way by creating employment. But of course, it too has challenges. If you really want to be like someone, some of the, the richest people that we just saw earlier in this course, you need a unique idea, face competition and challenges. You sometimes need a lot of capital to manage actively. And during the growth phase, you have to run the business hands on. And sometimes you are just investing all your money just to create employment for yourself. Now that's more like an employment rather than a business. Finally, if you research the companies that are listed on the stock market, you will find many unique ideas. Since there are a lot of regulations for such companies, the benefit for investors like yourself is that there is transparency. You have the opportunity to inspect their books and records and know exactly how profitable a company is. The management would provide you with guidance and explain how the business is doing and what their future plans are for growth. These companies hire professional management to run the business and create and grow shareholder value. Of course, there are challenges. For instance, like many investors don't have the knowledge and insight as to how to research a company, or they don't simply have the time to make these kind of assessments and make decisions of what to buy and when to buy or sell. So more often than not, investors buy after a stock has run up a lot or end up selling after it drops a lot, thinking that they'll never recover their money. But I want you to research 100 most richest people in the world. They all hold stocks of their companies and never sell them. Their only goal is to keep growing their businesses. The focus of this course will be to teach you how to analyze a company and help you make money and decide when to buy, sell, or hold. All right, so let's move on. Let's now try to understand the difference between a sector versus an industry or a company. S&P 500 is a widely followed index in the US which is considered a barometer to gauge the performance of the stock market. When discussing the performance during the day or for any other time period, the change up or down in S&P 500 is referred to as the performance of the stock market. S&P 500 has 11 sectors as shown over here on the slide. Each of these sectors are then further broken out into industries and industries comprise of various companies. The following table shows the weight of each sector in S&P 500. Since S&P 500 is a market capitalization weighted index, what it means is that the larger the size of a company, the more weight it's going to carry in the movement of that sector. For instance, Apple is the largest company, so it carries the most weight in the change of S&P 500. Apple is also part of the technology sector. So the movement in Apple's performance 
is not only going to impact S&P 500, but it's also going to impact the technology sector. Say you are interested in investing in certain sectors, you can simply buy exposure by, by investing into an exchange-traded ETF which, or exchange-traded fund, um, and you can immediately get exposure in that sector. For instance, you are interested in investing in information technology. Just by investing in VGT or XLK, you're immediately getting exposure into all the top companies that make up this sector. So now let's try to understand within the technology sector, what industries are there? So here's a list of all the industries that make up the technology sector. Just by investing into one ETF, which I showed you on the previous slide, VGT or XLK, you are immediately getting exposure into all these different industries and the companies that make up these industries. So you're getting exposure into renewable energy, semiconductors, computer hardware and software that drive technology. So now on this slide, let's look at the software companies within the technology sector and within the software industry. So now here are, here's a list of all the software companies, which a lot of them we use, use in our daily lives. Biggest of them all is Microsoft. Other than Microsoft, we use security software companies like Citrix and Norton. We use payroll processing companies like ADP, or we use enterprise software companies like SAP or Oracle. Now let's move on and look at a different sector, consumer discretionaries. Here is a list of all the industries that make up consumer discretionaries. So the list shows that consumer discretionaries is made up of hotels or home construction or retail companies or even car companies. So now on this slide, you can see names of some of the biggest companies that make that are part of the consumer discretionaries sector. So companies like Amazon, Walmart, or Alibaba are also part of consumer discretionaries. Car companies like Tesla or Ford or Toyota are consumer discretionary companies. Or even the restaurants that we visit, like McDonald's or Starbucks or Domino's Pizza, all these companies that people have a discretion for, whether they want to go and, and spend money in these companies, these are all consumer discretionary companies. Now let's look at the performance. This is as of 2021. Over the past 10 years, technology sector provided approximately 600% return to investors, while consumer discretionaries provided over 400% return. The, a blended return in S&P 500 is a little over 300%. So say you invested $10,000 10 years ago, and after 10 years, your, your $10,000 would be $60,000 had you invested into a technology EDF versus over $40,000 had you invested in consumer discretionaries. And say you wanted a blended uh, exposure into all these different companies, you would still be up to 30, over $30,000 by investing into S&P 500. Investment portfolio. All right, so we have been moving along nicely. We have learned about the stock market, S&P 500, which is an index and used to gauge the performance of the stock market. And then the sectors of S&P 500 and the industries and companies that make up those sectors. So now let's discuss about an investment portfolio. An investment portfolio consists of all your investments. Those could be stocks, bonds, real estate, or a business. But what do you need to keep in mind when creating an investment portfolio? This is the most important step, which is planning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. This is where you really need to do a SWOT analysis, which means knowing your strengths and weaknesses and what opportunities and threats are there in the market. Obviously, if you're just starting out, 
and have limited amount of money, you have limited options. You can start a business at a small scale, but if you're looking to buy real estate, you might not have enough cash to make the down payment. This is where the stock market comes in. With the stock market, we have great option to invest in businesses that you're interested in, and even when you have small amount of investments. As you have seen in previous slides, there are many sectors, industries, and companies to choose from. Say you would like to start a restaurant business, but it requires a lot of money, which you may not have at the moment. You can simply buy stocks of restaurants such as McDonald's or Domino's Pizza. Or say you would like to invest in a rental property. You can simply buy real estate investment trusts or REITs as we call them, which are traded on the stock market. These are, there are hundreds of REITs that are publicly traded, such as residential, office buildings, industrial facilities, shipping and storage, or even data centers. You can just buy stocks of these real estate investment trusts and start collecting dividends from day one. Thus, you don't have to deal with tenants, leaky toilets, vacancies, vandalism, or even managing your properties. So what you need to plan for is why are you investing? Are you investing for capital appreciation or to generate income or just simply to protect your capital or preserve it? Say you're young in your 20s. This is the time when you can take on more risk in your life. So in your 20s, the ideal choice is to invest in capital appreciation to grow your money. But as you get older and get closer to retirement, you may want to protect your capital and generate some income while not taking on a lot of risk. So at that time, you may want to switch your portfolio over from stocks to bonds so that you can preserve your capital and generate a little bit of income. When analyzing your portfolio, you can't just look at assets that make up your portfolio. Rather, you also have to keep in mind if you have any leverage or debt. Sometimes people become too aggressive and take on too much debt, or when they're investing in stocks, they start borrowing from the, the broker to buy more shares. But remember, leverage is a double-edged sword. When it's working for you, you're making really good money. But if things turn south you don't, and you don't have adequate risk management in place, you can lose your principal as well as, as the value of your stocks go down. Bubbles in the stock market or real estate are created and crashes occur due to leverage or greed. Finally, you should have a holistic view and take into account all your investments, assets, and liabilities. Plus, you should also take into consideration any future obligations that might be coming up, such as your kid's college education or a wedding that you would like to pay for, or even if you're close to retirement. This way, you can make sure your portfolio is structured to meet your current and future needs.